Hey. <laughs> we are hey. Live. I forgot my drink on the kitchen, and then I just realized it, so I had to make a run for it. You left it right on the kitchen, eh? Yeah. But I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Almost took out two dogs and a cat. I thought I heard some claws go in there. Oh, yeah. They were just, like, running because I was running when there was a stampede, but <laughs> all good. Awesome. How is everybody tonight? How are you doing, Adam? I'm doing good, brother. How about yourself? Good. Right good. on. I see you got the legend shirt on. Have you had the boat out lately? Yeah, we were out this weekend. I had the, my family, my sister, and uh, brother-in-law and kids. And mom right on. Out, hit up golf, caught some walleyes. There you go. Um, so I guess they're headed back up the Alaska Highway sometime this week. So it's good headed to see back them. up to the Yukon, eh? Yeah. Well, that's the dream. It was good to get them out and catch some fish anyways. Yeah, right on. I think next week we'll get them. Now you got to get up there. Yeah, maybe September. Yeah, hey. We'll see. Flights are pretty cheap these days. Are they? Surprisingly. Well, as long as you're not flying out of Pearson, because uh, that's just a massive headache right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's disgusting. It's been like rated number one on like the most uh, like missed flights, canceled flights list oh, for yeah. like weeks now for like the entire world, not just Canada. Huh. Yeah, like it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I heard Air Canada's having a horrible time doing stuff. Yeah, like I'd like to go home, but it ain't happening anytime soon. Yeah. No, I'm not going to deal with that. Well, we're talking trout today. Have you been out much lately? Uh, I haven't been out like in the past two weeks here. Uh, I guess two weeks ago I was out in the mountains there and fishing some trout and since then, I haven't been back out there, but work's been busy, so that's kind of holding me back. But Todd's getting married here right away, and I'm going to take some extra time off around that and definitely plug away out there. So I'm looking forward to that. Nice. Are you going to head out west up here then? or just down uh, I'll probably start down south and work my way up. Hit Todd's yeah. wedding and then hang out around up there for a little bit and then come back home. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, it'll be a good time. Yeah. Everything's coming down now. Everything's cleared up, so runoff's kind of over. We're looking at summer fishing here as the water levels kind of decrease, so things should be good. Yeah, even last weekend, uh, it looked uh, Dino. way better out west. Uh, it was oh. just a little off-colored, a little high, but yeah, rivers, like lots of those rivers have changed quite a bit. We got quite a bit of water flow down there. but Yeah, and I've noticed that a lot down in the areas that I fish, too, is a lot of things have changed around. A lot of tr new trees, a lot of old trees have been pushed out, and they're in new areas now, um, which tends to fill a hole up with gravel and make holes disappear, or, or maybe it clears it out and exposes some rock for fish to hold to, you know. So yeah. uh, good and bad things happen, and that's the life cycle of a river. It's a lot of fun. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it makes, wow. it, it makes it new every time, right? So, Yeah, it is the cleansing again, I guess. We yeah, had absolutely. A good eight years of the same thing. Now we got a whole different game plan to check out next time out there. So, Absolutely. And, like, I mean, this big, this, I mean, this lasting high water that we had late into July here, um, that, that allowed fish to really move and change their homes. And so, you might not find a fish that you've been you've been watching and chasing for a while, or you might have giant fish move into holes that you haven't necessarily seen things before. So it makes the exploration a lot more fun, that's for sure. Oh, for sure. What's your uh, regular setup? What setups will you bring when you head out west? Say you're going to a Cuddy Bull Trout stream. Are you running two rods? or? Oh, yeah, always two rods. Um Lately, I've honestly been trying to just stick to straight fly fishing, um, just trying to better myself at that. Um, it's always been something that I enjoy doing, but uh, I just need to get better at it. So I've been really focused on that this year. Um, if it's just going to be strictly bulls, I will bring a spin rod a lot of times. I mean, Rapalas, um, 
uh, what am I thinking? Uh, Panther Martin, you know, spinners, they're going to do awesome. Right. But, uh, been fishing a lot of streamers lately, so I'll carry like an eight weight and then I'll carry a five weight so that I can nymph and dry fly fish, right? So, yeah, if I'm prospecting, I'm normally just gonna nymph because I mean, fish feed a lot under the surface, right? And if you're gonna catch them on nymphs, they're gonna be willing to eat other things too. Yeah, so when you're searching, when you first get to the river, say you're going for cutties, are you uh. What's your kind of tackle setup you're going to run? Are you going to do a dry? Are you going to nymph? Are you going to do a dropper? Yeah, so like that's dependent. Like, so say two weeks ago um, when water was still super high, a little bit murky, right? Uh, I was walking out. Main rod was going to be indicator and two nymphs, two tungsten nymphs. Um, tungsten in the high water is going to cut the water, get down fast. Um, so I was nymphing a lot. Uh, I did fish like a dry dropper um on the second rod but it really I, I couldn't get any fish to come up and eat so i was getting everything down low so i would just adjust my indicator from hole to hole and that that was really really productive um for the bulls just big white streamers um the clarity was still kind of there right so i've been uh i had a uh, bobby ziegler um what you've had him on before uh he yeah. kind of taught me a little bit of how to fish streamers couple of years back when we fished together and uh so i've really been trying to work on that and uh man it's been working out lately <laughs> i got a couple yeah. really good fish a couple small fish which is which is always fun but uh, a couple good fish so that was awesome for sure and when we're talking that hopper dropper a stimulator dropper it's somewhat like that pretty much one to three feet underneath is do you usually do or well yeah like i mean that's going to depend on the depth that i'd like to choose any deeper than three feet i mean you're going to kind of you're yeah. kind of defeating the purpose of fishing a hopper dropper so yeah i'd say that's about right um definitely i tie off the bend of the hook as shown um yeah. i know there is a few different ways to do it um but i find tying off the bend of the hook is is probably your best bet um, with a lot of guys going barbless now, um, and tippet rings are really gaining popularity. I noticed guys are tying a tippet ring, maybe 12 inches above their dry and then fishing that, fishing that dropper out from there. Um, but that, that's exactly how I fish them there. Um, depending on the dry, like, so hopper season is just kind of getting going, uh, down South anyways. I know that guys were saying they're seeing a lot of hoppers, uh, to, maybe even three weeks ago around central Alberta, but yeah. like down South here, like I didn't start seeing hoppers till about a week, week and a half ago. Um, so like with smaller dries, I'll fish like a regular bead headed nymph or yeah. that one looks to be like, just like a straight, like straight wet fly almost um, or non bead headed nymph. Um, yeah. And yeah, that, that works perfectly when you're fishing drakes and mayflies and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, if I'm fishing a hopper, I'm definitely going to be fishing a bead head nymph just so that I can get it down quick, right? Even emergers, emergers these days, you can get guys to tie them with tungstens and it's going to get down that foot below the surface like right now. So, for sure. Yeah. I find that's been the biggest game changer in like me catching a lot of fish on the fly rod compared to like not as many, especially yeah. when I'm nymphing is like, or hopper dropper is like tungsten is like the, how fast it gets down is. So crucial, so crucial. Is are those tungsten flies? Then is it the hook that's tungsten or the bead? No, no, it's the bead that's tungsten. So uh, I guess you won't be, you wouldn't be able to hear it. But your bead is still the same size. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to see that very well. But your bead is still the same size. Um, but it's a lot denser, a lot heavier. So it's just gonna cut water and get down faster. Some I fish like. Uh, like I'll fish like a size 18 pheasant tail with yeah. a size above it, tungsten bead. And that way I know like, so if I'm fishing really fast water, but I still want to throw a hopper into it, I know that my nymph isn't just going to float around behind my hopper. It's going to get down like it's supposed to. For sure. Yeah. I'll always just run uh, stimulators. Yeah. I do a lot of stimulator. So when Absolutely. I do that, and, well, uh, stimula stimulator mimics so many things, right? Like it's a hopper, it's a stonefly, it's 
all yeah. sorts of things. It's such a good fly to have in your box. It's a cash grabber. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can change yeah. your body colors. You can change your head yeah. colors, legs, no legs, bunch yeah. of hair, poly wings. So like, I love Stimmy. Yeah. Stimmy was like probably one of the first fish or first dries that I like really got used to fishing. And I think my PB Cuddy is still on a stimulator. So. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely my go-to. And like, oh, yeah. I'll clip all those bottom part of the hackles on the bottom yeah. of the fly. I'll cut those flat every time so that thing sits perfectly flat. Yeah, and then it'll ride really nice, right? Yeah, it'll keep those wings up. Absolutely. You'll have great flow. Absolutely. Yeah, that, like, stimulator is one of my favorites. Like, I was fishing a lot of, uh, like, like I'm a big fan of, like, parachute atoms. Um, yeah. Just regular style atoms, female atoms. Um, those have always been really good to me. And like, I just wasn't getting anything looking up earlier this year. I mean, the water was pretty murky, right? And pretty high. So those fish were pretty tight to bottom. If I put nymphs on and I was taking bottom, I was catching lots. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was like, go, go with the parachutes just because I'm blind and that cap yeah. is a lot easier to see. <laughs> <laughs> well, I fish a lot of double drives too. So like, I'll oh, fish yeah. like a cider, which is going to be a stimulator or, or some sort of terrestrial beater, a beetle or a hopper, and then fish yeah. that behind it. And then I can fish a small one. And I know relatively, hey, oh, something rose 10 inches behind it. Chances are I've already seen that fish anyways and I'm targeting it. Yeah. So I can grab more. Yeah. No, that's a good idea. Because I know when I go for golden trout, I definitely can't see my fly. Oh, yeah, for sure. No. Like I, I know where the tip of my fly line is and I know where about 12 feet, 13 feet from there is. And if uh, I get a rise, I'm probably going to set the hook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, John. Um, with those uh, between your double dries, what size of tip are you running? Well, I mean, so if I'm like fishing the bow, probably yeah. 2X or 3X. Right. Um, 3X would be like, like, as low as I'm probably going to go. Okay. Um, but when I fish the mountains, honestly, a lot of times I fish 5X. I know a lot of guys like beak 5X, but I mean, it catches a ton of fish. So, oh, yeah. Really strong, depending on what brand of tippet you buy, right? You got to buy a good tippet. Um, and then that's the other thing that where that tungsten again comes into play. Um, 5X, if you put a split shot on it, like, good luck you're pretty much gambling with breaking that fish off every time. So the tungsten is so nice because it eliminates the need for shot. Cause I hate using split shot. It just tangles. It's, it's oh, yeah. a breaking point. It's horrible, but it's necessary. Sometimes um, I lost a really nice fish cause I was using shot earlier this year, but it was just too deep. Like, so. When you do that double uh, dry fly, are you putting your heavier fly at the back then? And having a uh, usually fly. usually I put my bigger fly at the front. Yeah. When I'm running double the drives and I'll tie like um I'm not very good with the names of knots, but the one where it's like it's loose, like a rappel and knot basically um so your fly can move independently, right? And then I'll yeah. tie my second fly off the shank again and then straight to a rappel and knot again. So that each fly can float nice and independently. I'm not usually going much further than 10 inches apart because if you hook a fish at that point, it's just a, like, it'll get tangled and it's just a pain in the butt. So I try to keep it pretty short. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But um, yeah, when I'm like, when I'm fishing, when I'm fishing dries, it's usually biggest fly at the front. When I'm fishing nymphs, it's heaviest, it's heaviest fly at the front. But so recently I've been fishing a lot of barbless mainly because that's the guy that I get my flies off of ties barbless and that's fine with me. Um, so I'm going to have to start changing the way that I run my rigs because you can't necessarily rely on tying off the shank of the hook. If there's no barb to hold your tippet from slotting off. Right. Yeah. Um, now how I'm going to do that with dries, I'm not overly sure with nymphs. I'll just run a tippet ring. That's simple. Um, but that changes things because normally when I run nymphs, 
all around a golden stone or like a black stone, something big as my point fly at the front. That's going to get down fast. And yeah. then I'll tie my second fly off the back. Right. Because as it's coming through the current, this one's bouncing off bottom and this one's just floating just ever so slightly above it. But if you're running barbless and you're running off tippet ring, it's kind of the opposite because your lighter fly has to be up top and your heavier fly has to be below because yeah. otherwise your rig's just going to tangle. For sure. Now, um, I got to say, I'm not a fan of tippet rings. No. No, they're no, a pain in the butt. Never used them. No? Always turn off the tank. It's just an awkward hinge point and it's terrible. Yeah. Hmm. Um, what kind of line do you like to use your fly line? I know um, kind of absolutely. Fly line. No, but line. like, so fly line, depending on, like, obviously we can go into this one for a little while, uh, depending on the situation. But there's so many out there nowadays that it's like hard to decipher, like, what fly line do I buy when I go to the store or like when I'm online? Um, so that's why I kind of want to talk about them. Um, so, at the top there, we have like your straight taper, which is basically a line that there's just zero taper to it. So a lot of times that's just weight to get your fly out there. Um, it's kind of going to splash when it hits the water. So if you're fishing like terrestrials or streamers or what have you, that's totally fine. Um, a lot of full sink lines, obviously, are going to be straight taper. Um, but then you got weight forwards and weight forwards is where it kind of gets complicated. So the weight forward that you have there, um, as you guys can see, I won't point at my screen because that just looks weird. Um, but it's got like your main body and then it's got a short taper off the front. And then you actually don't have that much running line coming off the front. Usually your taper goes straight to your welded loop or whether you fish welded loops or not. Um, so basically a line like that, there's going to be a really good nymphing line, uh, a streamer line. A lot of times you're like sink tips or your intermediates are shaped like that. Um, but if you're fishing like small streams, the double taper, which is below it, is kind of where you want to be because you have more of a lead. Like your taper just kind of goes out towards your fly. So that's going to project your fly and lay your leader out straight and it's not going to splat. So as if you have like your way forward, like you have above that, it is going to splat just a little bit harder. I realized that, and they, they cover this in, in a recent video I watched, um, but yeah, the first 30 feet of all fly lines, it, say it's a six-way fly line, it all weighs the exact same, but if your taper is not the same, it's going to land on the water different, and that makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um, we could talk tippet rings more in a second. Uh, if you have no idea what a tippet ring is. Um, but so then, like I say, you have your double taper. Double tapers are sweet because that's going to give you that long taper, like I said, that you want for, say, dry fly fishing on a small stream. Say you're fishing like Old Man, Livingston, Highwood, stuff like that, as opposed to like the Bow, um, South Saskatchewan, North Saskatchewan, where you got to make longer casts. Um, yeah. double tapers are sweet too, because then you basically get two fly lines in one. I'm like super good at breaking the welded loop off. Um, <laughs> and if you got a double taper line, you just flip it around and you got the exact, it's literally the exact same line on the other side. So oh, that's yeah. pretty sick. Yeah. Um, get rid of the cat. <laughs> Bye kitty. I like cats, man. Um, so when you obviously, uh, I like when I fish streamers, I fish like an intermediate line, um, which is like this spool here. Um, I realize that's going to make no difference as you look at it. But yeah. the point is, is I have, so carrying a bunch of rods is kind of a pain in the butt, especially if you're in the woods. Um, so I have a reel and by no ways, do I, like I won't even name the brand. Um, but this reel, I can change the spools on it super fast. So I know guys sometimes carry extra reels. But being able to change your school like that is just super handy because when I fish a streamer, even in like small water, it's kind of nice to have an intermediate line because an intermediate and sink tip isn't the same thing uh, for people who don't know. And an intermediate just floats slightly below 
the surface, which is good for like wet fly fishing and obviously streamer fishing in a lot of the small streams around here, like say Castle, Old Man. Um, so it's nice to be able to like switch out super quick. And, and I mean, if you don't want to carry two rods, there's reels on Amazon that are super cheap that are really good from a, I think it's Max Catch. And I use a lot of their rods, but I haven't used any of the reels yet. But yeah, they're super cheap. It'll work super good for you. Um, so I suggest kind of like if you don't want to carry two rods, definitely carry two lines because unless you plan on being like a dry fly guy all day or nymphing all day, um, it's kind of handy. So now for back to tippet rings. Tippet rings are like kind of new to me too, Dino. Um, basically, I won't be able to show you on the lanyard, but it's so that you so you have your basic nine foot leader. It's a tapered leader. And then, I mean, a lot of guys will fish their, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> fish their fly right off the end of that. But uh, I, I technically, I, I usually tie a double uni knot and extend my leader out to like 12 feet, uh, sometimes longer, sometimes that's not necessary. Um, but a tippet ring, basically the idea of that is you can tie that onto your leader, tie your tippet off that, and then you're... But you're basically never going to have to use it. Like your leader can last you for as long as it lasts you before it's like UV damage because uh, you're never cutting anything off of it. You're always just adding tippet to it. Um, and then a lot of guys, like I say, they use tippet rings to tie double flies. So they'll come down with their tippet. They'll come down with their tippet and then they'll go to the tippet ring here and they'll tie more tip it down to their point fly, which is their heavy fly down here. But they'll leave their tag end super long, maybe five, six inches, and they'll tie a lighter fly off that. So basically it just gives you a point to have two flies off. It just yeah. makes it easier to tie two flies or never have to reuse or never have to tie on a different leader. Yeah, for sure. Um, so they are kind of handy, but, uh, if you can avoid using them, like they're really good for like lake fishing, but for stream fishing, I find it's a lot easier to just use knots. Yeah. The meters aren't that expensive. Fly fishing fly. P rig. Yeah. Basically it's, <laughs> it's a hinge point. Yeah. <laughs> for your bull trout setup, you're rocking the eight weight then. Yeah. If I don't break it. Well, it sounds like you've been doing well this year breaking them. Yeah. No, so um, I like to I like to carry an eight weight and I like to like I say, I like to carry a, I like to carry a six weight. I know a lot of guys carry a five, five is great too. Um, but it turns over flies. Um, but an eight weight for bulls is just super handy for handling them. Um, a lot of times like you'll be fishing them in, in like buckets or like uh, uh, big plunge pools. And yeah. perhaps they're flowing pretty fast and they're not very far apart and they're not very easy to get from one to the other. Um, so you got to be able to hold that fish. I know a lot of people are down to chase fish. I'm not really into that. I want to stand my ground and fight it from where I hooked it. Um, so an eight weight does that for me. And then like if you're fishing, so say you're fishing. So I'll be fishing a lot of times for a bull. This is like a, maybe a four inch white streamer. Yeah. Um, but I'll throw shot on at that point because that's big spun deer hair at the front. It's going to catch their lateral line. They're going to notice it, right? And it's going to make them move. Um, plus it gives a profile. Um, but you got to throw shot on to get that down in some of these holes. And especially like um, bull trout like to hang out in fast water. Um, so you got to be able to get it down quick into yeah. those plunge pools for them and then strip it back to you. So uh, you got to throw shot on sometimes. And I just find, like, with my six weight, I feel like I'm just overpowering it, trying to throw big blueberries around. It's no good for it. So an eight weight, just it just handles that, makes it a lot easier for you. When you want to just drift that and then um, swing your streamer to the side and then just lo flip your streamer. I just, like, so many times, guys, I would just water load everything. My streamers, yeah. I'll let it out to the point, I'll swing it over, and I'll just water load it back to where I want it and drift it through and then strip back, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Eight weight no. is definitely 
it's just a lot more capable of rod. You can do it with six weight, absolutely. Um, but it's just taxing on the rod. It's taxing on you. It's going to be hard to do all day. Um, and, I mean, bull trout aren't in every hole, so you're going to be throwing all day. Yeah, for sure. That's why you need the double rods for different species. And then, like, not only that, but, like, so I've caught golden trout on an eight weight. I don't, I don't care. You just – if. If you've been up to a lot of these golden trout lakes, it's windy as can be. Um, and an eight weight rod can just power a fly so much better than um, five weight, uh, three. I see a lot of guys using three weights. Um, mm -hmm. And like, they're awesome. Like, three weight is so much fun. I got a three weight, mm -hmm. so much fun. But in the wind, it's just like frustrating to use. Um, yeah. So it's nice yeah. to have a, a larger rod to power your fly through the wind, right? Yeah. Yeah, then you're not bulldogging all day long. Yeah, absolutely, man. <laughs> it gets difficult. Like like I say, I, I, I've broken two eight weights this year, so I've been forced to put in that position. The one day I was chucking 10-inch flies with my six weight, and I was just like, after like two hours, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to go home. This is painful. <laughs> like, yeah. Catch a couple pike, it's like, no, I'm good. Yeah. How would you break your rods? No, oh, just like not even cool stuff. Like, uh, so I'm pretty sure the second one, like, uh, honestly, dude, I don't even know. Like, I couldn't even tell you. It was fine when I went to bed. When I woke up in the, yeah, I think it was fine when I went to bed. When I woke up in the morning, I got, I was in the boat and I go to cast it one time, folds in half. I was like, oh, sick. Oh, yeah. That, that definitely was stepped on, or I don't know. The second one, or I mean, the first one, that one was an expensive one. Um, but I was just getting out of my boat on shore, and I kind of bobbled, and I dropped my oar, and it landed oh, yeah. and connected with the eight weight in the side of the boat, and Perfect. snapped you away. Oh, man. Yeah, it was a rough one. And I actually got that one through sponsorship, and it, like, wasn't sponsorship through the company. Um, so they won't even give me warranty on it. And it's an expensive rod. Well, that sucks. Yeah. All right. So if um, anyone's got a tip for a Sage Motive, eight weight, <laughs> nine foot, please get in touch with me. I would love to use that rod again. I love it, but it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> there should be someone that's got something. Or yeah, like, like maybe Bobby Z. Like I don't. I haven't. I, I should message him about it. It just like doesn't make sense to me because it's a clean break, like halfway down the fourth section. Like it's no good. Oh yeah, yeah. It's bad news bears. Might be able to fab something up. Yeah. Nice thing about the streams clearing up though is throwing white flies big time again. Like I was throwing black and a lot of olive, right? In the yeah. dirtier water, it just gives you a better shadow. But it's nice to be throwing that white again. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it turns out um, Fisher. Do you got any trips planned coming up soon for the mountains? Um, so I really want to do um, some dollies. Yeah. Um, so that's something I've never done. Uh, definitely have watched Ricky's videos. Uh, Ricky's got some super sick videos on that. So I've watched those. It gives, gives me a few pointers on that. I'm going to try to catch them in a couple of the creeks too because uh, – there's some creeks that hold them that are open as well. So that'll yeah. be pretty fun. Um, along with that, uh, what are you doing around Todd's wedding? You want to try for some browns maybe? Or what? Yeah, we could do that. I'm thinking I want to do some browns. I want to do golden soon. Can I do a PSA on golden? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that I don't want to do goldens around here because that's too much walking for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually like honestly dude like they lie about how long it is on the on the on the internet three yeah, hours is if you like want to have a nap and hang out and pick your nose a whole lot which i do pick my nose a lot but i do it while i'm walking so it's yeah. pretty handy efficient right um but the creek below golden trout where you fill up your water bottle and drink it because it's ever so tasty, is yeah. actually close to fishing. It's not allowed. You're not allowed to fish in there. That bucket there. Um, been seeing some pictures out of there, having like messages sent to me like, 
oh, it's stacked full of fish, which is like super cool because they'll like, li like golden trout come from California and they live in like tiny, tiny streams that like you can literally take strides across, not jump across, take strides across. So they'll yeah. live in there a long time and hopefully get big and hopefully one day they open it up for fishing. Um, but for now, you got to kind of like leave them alone so they can do their thing and hopefully populate that creek so that one day we can fish it. Um, the information out there saying that it dries up is not true. Um, maybe pockets of it um, don't fully flow throughout the entire year, but it's actually spring fed as well as runoff fed. Um, so it's it's going to get uh, it's going to hold fish all year. Like just leave them alone. Um, have a look at them. Maybe stick your GoPro under the water. And like I say, fill up your water bottle and the water will fall. But uh, try to leave those guys alone, guys. It's kind of self-incriminating evidence that you're a poser. So, <laughs> I mean, like, really, they're like the toughest fish to catch. And if you can get them in a pocket this big after you just did that great big hike, is it really that cool? I don't think so. Sure. Especially when you know it's close. I'm pretty sure all those gold trout lakes, any of the creeks coming out of them are closed in Alberta. Yeah. And so, like, There's if you – one here. really cool thing, which kind of sucks because, like, global warming is not real, but uh, they actually used to be in the castle, eh? Hey? So they would come oh. down the river back in, in, like, the 80s and the 70s when the water temperature was still a lot colder in, uh, like, the West Castle there, which runs through the bottom of it. And uh, they actually used to be in there, so that's kind of cool. Hmm. Have you ever heard of an Apache trout? Yeah, I have. Yeah. So I watched okay. these guys on YouTube. I can't remember the channel. Yeah, I can't remember the channel. But, yeah, they caught Apache trout. They're pretty sweet, eh? Yeah, I watched a video the other day on YouTube. A guy and a girl did it. Yeah, they okay, they're the ones in the van, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember what their name is for the life of me. It's a pretty good show, though. Yeah, they do some really, really good documentaries, man. Like, really yeah. good. Yeah, I'll try to find it and maybe bring it up or post it up on the website later. But they but try to catch, like, all the different rare species of cutthroat throughout um, the states there and different oh, yeah. kinds of – There, I watched one yesterday. They did some sort of brookie in Maine, too. It was really cool. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you ever chase brookies in those mountains? Not so much brookies in the mountains. I chase brookies on the fly a lot, absolutely, but uh, not in the mountains. Um, I got some creeks around me that have them. I have a yeah. lake around me that has them. Uh, there's lots of lakes in Alberta that have them. Um, but I've never gone out in the mountain streams and chased them, to be honest with you. Um, I have come across a couple. I, I actually caught one in the Bow River one time on a dry fly, which was kind of strange. Um, but uh, never chase them in the streams out there. No. You get into some good ones out there? Uh, 12s. 12s yeah. usually a big one. Yeah, right. And like, so, so I have a creek close to me. Um, there isn't very many creeks around me, so it's not a big secret one. Um, but it's got a ton of brookies in it, and, I mean, they range anywhere from – you'll catch 6 inches to 12 inches. But they're absolutely gorgeous fish, and they're eager to take anything you throw at them. So they're a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. They love and those log jams, right? Yeah. And they're yeah, always good over the fire anyways. Just oh, yeah, absolutely. Tasty. absolutely. I bet you they're the tastiest trout out there, in my opinion. I'd, I'd agree with that. I will eat a brookie over a rainbow absolutely any day of the week. Oh, for sure. I absolutely will probably not. I'll probably go hungry rather than eat a rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> not a fan. Not a fan, man. No? No, like if you get me like a Great Lakes one, like back home, absolutely yeah. I'll crush that. But they're just not the same. Like these stock pond rainbows, like I'm good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, what uh, What kind of structure are you fishing for cutthroats in the rivers? Well, they kind of need something to hold to, right? So yeah. uh, basically anything. A lot of times I fish gravel shells, especially early in the year, um, like right now. I'll fish where it's going to flow right over top and drop into a pool or yeah. into a run of some sort. Maybe it's coming in from the side of the main stem. 
um, a lot of times they'll be nosed right into that gravel shelf there. So you can drag your nymphs. You got to cast it over top of it kind of, but drag your nymphs or your dry dropper through there. And that's, that's a key way to hook up with fish. A lot of times I find that's really good with, with nymphs rather than the dry. The dry, they'll kind of be sitting back a little bit further than nosed yeah. in. Um, but, but gravel shelves is a big one. Even like, uh, so Bow River um, gravel shelf, it's going to create like a, a difference, right? So that water comes over, they can sit right underneath that shelf and it's not running fast down there. It's chilling out. So the fish can hang out below the shelf and then it's kind of calm. Yeah. Kind of creek on the weekend. I was unaware of the rookies. Nice, dude. Yeah. So I was actually unaware that there is actually a pretty good Dolly Varden population that runs down through Alberta. I got to oh, yeah. check that out, man. Yeah. Like not through Alberta. I shouldn't say that. That's whole oh, false runs down from Chester where that's the only population run they have. Right. But it runs down there. It runs through another lake. It runs through there and actually runs into spray. There could huh. be Dolly Varden potentially in spray lakes. Yeah. Crazy. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, with those, like, I know early in the season, you're saying you hit those shelves. Yeah. Kind of that soft water on the edge of the riffles there. Yeah. Where other stuff's joining. Do you have, I know I like once the water gets a little lower and the temperature gets up, I like to even higher up in the riffles. I find we catch a lot Absolutely. more the oxygen levels are a little higher. Yeah. Once things start to heat up this summer here, they're definitely going to be moving into that faster water. Um, a lot of times I find, especially with cutties, right? Uh, bulls too big for this. Any trout really is going to try to find cover. So if you can find, uh, Fast water flowing into some trees, log jam, right? Yeah. Log jam is going to be a clutch one because there's cool water that's always cycling underneath that and then getting pushed out by the current that's coming through it. Um, so that's definitely key. Um, right now, boulders too in pockets. Any sort of bigger rock that a fish can hold to, right, is going to be key. Because, I mean, the water isn't down yet. It's still coming down, so they still need a place to hold. Um, so any any sort of cover um, boulders are going to be pretty key. Yeah, for sure. Like right now, yeah. first thing in the morning, for instance, um, first thing in the morning two weeks ago, you couldn't pull a fish out of a log jam um, unless you were maybe hucking a streamer. If you are hucking streamers, you could. Um, but until about 10, 30 or so, we started to see hatch coming off, right? And then you could see fish cycling out more in, in softer water, in the pockets more, and they're eating a little more nymphs, right? Um, so that was the kind of tougher thing earlier this year is you run into a lot of streamer fishing because you got to get the fish to move from whatever cover it's on. As to now, they're going to start moving out into that water where you can just huck. You can walk down the middle of the river if you can and just huck dries back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I know if I'm fishing the old man, if I can walk straight up the middle, I'll walk straight up the middle and just cast back and forth side to side. Yeah. Yeah, I know me and Aaron are going to go out for some cutties this weekend, some bulls. Up by right Monday. on. So, I'll be good. Yeah, see, so I was, I was kind of thinking about going this weekend, but I just I hate long weekends out there. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. yeah, we'll do some bushwhacking. And hopefully it's not too busy back where we go, but yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. As long as you're bushwalking a lot of times, like I shouldn't really complain because a lot of spots I go to, I don't run into people on long weekends anyways. Yeah. And that's the nice thing about now is man, some of the crossings were a little, a little iffy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I think we're down pretty good now. Like two yeah. weeks ago, it was, coming down pretty steady and we haven't had too much rain since then so yeah I'm see, like, pretty nice we were, we were up pretty good down here and like i was doing some crossings and there's just areas i couldn't go that i normally cross that uh would have been nice to get to but i just couldn't get there so yeah it'll be nice to get back and get out to those areas and those spots and see see what's happening out there because like we said earlier with this high water all year and it's, it's, everything's going to be changed up a bit. It's cool to see what will be hanging around. 
Yeah. Blue. I know I got into some really good cuts my first weekend, that's for sure. Like, after, like I mean, I don't take a whole lot of pictures anymore. Um, if I'm filming, I'm filming. If I'm not, I couldn't really care less. Um, but, like, I would get in the seams and, like, you, I, I was catching, like, 25 fish out of the seam. Like, okay, move up a little bit. Bang, 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 bang. Just turn nymphs over. Bang, 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 bang. And it would just be, like, sort of, like I was saying, gravel shelves or, like, little out corners um, where you would get kind of, kind of like I was talking, you would get a plunge pool. But on the outer corner, it would be shallow. And you get rainbows or cuts stacked along those, and it was just fire. Um, certain spots on the on the old man and crow's nest, like browns, every cast, like it was like little ones, like not big yeah. fish. Uh, but I mean, the fish were chewing. So with the high water like this, like the fish were plump. It's good to see them. Yeah, no, we're supposed to go to North Saskatchewan next week, but trip got canceled. So. We have some time to do something. I don't know if we're going to head north to Cold Lake again and maybe throw in some Laclavish and everything. Yep. Otherwise, we'll probably head down and fish the Old Man and Livingston and all those fun places in the Crow. Yeah. But who knows? we got a week Yeah, to... I mean, the West has so many options. And, like, the Tribs, like, the Tribs are honestly my favorite. I kind of try to stay off the main stems. But, like, dude, the, the fishing this year has been unreal and, I'm just I'm just looking forward to what the season's going to bring. So um, I'm glad to see fish are looking up. I haven't been able to to experience that a whole lot, other than towards my end of the spectrum, not out west so much. Um, but I'm excited to get some fish looking up and uh, see what happens that way. Yeah. What uh, videos do you have planned for the rest of the season, or do you just kind of wing it when you feel like it? So yeah, like so yeah, like that's like the thing about me is like. I honestly, I'd love to make videos, but I couldn't really care less about making them. Um, they're a lot of fun. I film certain things, and like right now, what I've been doing. Um, so when I was out west two weeks ago, I filmed for. I think I filmed for half a day, and I just wanted to get certain things um, yeah. because I want to make like a. I was. I don't know if I said this before. I want to make like kind of like a video. Um, of the year and kind of like, cause things are kind of getting back to normal. It like feels like things are getting back to normal. Anyways. And like, I tried to ignore it for a while, but, uh, last two years sucked, man. And, uh, so I just want to kind of make a, a video about that and just like, I don't know, I'm kind of big on mental health and yeah, it'll kind of be about that and my journey with fishing and how much I love that. And just like out West for me is like, kind of like a big savior for me it kind of saved me and uh that's good that's kind of like the big plan that i have for right now for a video is uh just one kind of about me fishing the things that i love i mean i'm sure i'll probably catch a sturgeon in it i'm sure i'll probably catch a bull in it but i'll probably just more or less tell you like this is why i'm here like this is why i love to do this instead of like you know like i kind of here I'll go off one a little bit. Um, I kind of don't like to make videos unless I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, if I don't know what I'm talking about, um, I'll, I'll shoot like a vlog style video, but I'm not really big on the vlog style videos. Cause like, man, I'm 32 years old. I'm not like some young kid. Like they're, <laughs> they're kind of cool. Like, like, and like there's people that do it that are good at it. Like for instance, Ricky, Ricky makes vlog style videos that are prime. I like watching them. Yeah. Um, but like, I like cinematics big time and it just takes me too long. Like, so I'm working a 10, like, I don't know if people know, I work a full-time job, work 10, 12 hour days. It's a lot for me to like edit till one in the morning and then put out a video for a hundred people to watch. Like if only, and like, don't get me wrong. I'm thankful for the hundred people that watch it. And I hope that they are, they learn something from it. That's sick. Um, but it's just not worth that time. If like you have any questions, feel free to just message me about whatever you're doing. And I'll gladly tell you, because I mean, a lot of people know, I don't, I don't care. I'll tell you anything really. Um, but uh, yeah, like I think that's about the only project I really have in mind. 
I would like to uh, shoot things for other people more or less because that would be more fun. I'd be able to get, so I fish alone a lot. It's really hard yeah. to film yourself alone. Um, and like a, one of my last sturgeon videos, I'm like flying my drone. Like I'm pretty close to crashing it because I'm trying to fly my drone and film and land a sturgeon and do all that at one time. And I find it not only like takes away from my experience, but it just like doesn't look good. Like it just yeah. doesn't look good. Uh, so if I can film other people, like I can make that look good because I know, I know how to do it. It's just if you're filming yourself all the time, it can only be so great, right? So oh, I got wow. some buddies back home in Ontario that are working on shots for me from back home. It's gonna be a cool video. Yeah, for sure. It's so much easier when you got two or three other guys that can just be fishing. Then you're not tossing a net to them or doing Absolutely. whatever, like panicking to get something to them or. It just, if you and like, take the time and set up the show, it's a lot easier for the filmer. And then, right. And like the, the thing that I don't like doing um, is like ever asking anyone to do anything for me. So, like I say, I fish alone a lot. Um, but like I'll go fishing with like, say, Tash. Tash is someone I fish with a lot. And it's like, I don't want to be like, oh, can you do this and film this for me? Like, what am I, an arrogant dickhead? No. Well, kind of sometimes, but, but I, I just don't – I don't like asking people to do that because, like, I don't want to take away from their experience either, right? So yeah. hopefully I'll get to shoot some stuff for other people this year. If they want to message me, if they have something in mind, we can do that up for sure. Well, we'll do a brown trout show anyways. That would be cool. Then, then we can film each other. Yeah, because it's not so like I don't like being in front of the camera. camera. <laughs> I, like, think that, I, like, I'm probably, like, probably my biggest fan for comedy ever other than maybe my mom but i think i'm pretty funny and do some funny stuff so like i like being on camera but like like i say it's just like hard to encapsulate everything especially when you go to the mountains man like i don't know it's hard yeah no next week i'll be doing a lot of filming so i'll probably just be filming mostly than watching but i enjoy that I bought I bought like a bunch of GoPro batteries and I was like, oh yeah, this is sick. And then I bought this backpack and I was like, oh yeah, this is sick. Then I went walking around and the backpack wasn't very sweet and it opened up and dumped <laughs> all my ba- batteries through the woods. So if oh. anyone wants, if anyone finds some batteries along a, a, a western stream of some GoPros <laughs> in the case charging case, you're welcome. Have a good day. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't what cross track? that day, so it should have been good. Oh, yeah. Did you, uh, what kind of backpack did you get for all your camera gear? Oh, I just, I'm like, I'm like the Amazon, Amazon yeah, King, yeah. bro. Yeah. It's just like a, like a mole style backpack. So actually, backpacks are pretty clutch things to have for fishing. So we'll go over yeah. some pretty quick things. Right here, waist straps. I feel like I'm like working for like Gucci, <laughs> but no, yeah, like waist straps that have good pockets on them. That's handy because so small fly box, right? Uh, yeah. So other thing, this this was like this was like I, so I used to skateboard. You always skateboarding backpacks when you grew up. They had these on the front all the time. It's two straps go across the front. Boom, holds your skateboard in place. And uh, so I had all these skateboarding pack racks when I started fishing again and I used to stick my net in there and I thought it was like the cat's meow because if I use a magnet, it's gone every like 10 seconds. I use a pretty big net. Um, but I find having this, I can slide my net right down in there. That's perfect. It never comes out. You never lose it. You can cinch it down in your straps and it's super easy to reach back. Just grab your net. Boom. Good to go. Yeah. Um, and then I got carabiners all over it. Right. Um, but now I've smartened up. So this, this was the culprit right here. This strap would undo like if it was windy, maybe. Oh, yeah. So now I got a carabiner that holds it in place. It's good to go. I haven't lost anything since. Nice. Have a good backpack. That's clutch. The yeah. other thing that goes with your backpack is a whole, I don't wear a lanyard. I know a lot of guys like to wear a lanyard. But a good keychain that can hold like literally everything you need in one place is like 
it's such a time saver. I don't know how many times. I mean, you break off or you want to change flies, um, you're going to need your tippet, right? So you got your tippet. Well, what do you need when you're using tippet? You need – oh, cool. I just lost my thermometer. Um, but you, you need uh, nippers, right? So you got your nippers right there. Um, another thing that I got to recommend, guys, is having a leader straightener, especially if you're using smaller tippet. Basically, it's just two pieces of leather. Stick it in there, pull it across. Straightens out your leader. I also have tippet rings on there, which you'll never be able to see because they're really small. Um, and a hook sharpener. Yeah. Flies, nymphs, especially when nymphs are ticking the bottom all day long, you're going to wear them down a little bit. So you got to give them a little bit of a sharpener. Now, obviously, with small hooks, you can't sharpen them too many times before they're junk, but it's good to have anyways. And then, most importantly, you have a thermometer. Um, we're still early, so there's no need to really worry yet. Um, down south, anyways. Um, when, I, when I was out two weeks ago, the warmest water that I could find in slack water that was maybe two feet deep was 38 degrees, which is quite cold still, obviously. Um, so you don't got to worry yet, but have your thermometer because we're going to need them at some point. And uh, with the new rules they brought in, they're probably going to get smart and shut things down at some point. So you got to be able to watch the stream and know what you're doing, right? Yeah, for sure. It's. It, I think this weekend's supposed to be like 27, 26 up here. Yeah, yeah which like pretty. ambient when it's like warm out, guys. Too like something that I've been practicing like is just different styles of photography, right? Like barely pick the fish's head out of the water and have your buddy right there to just snap a shot of its head while it's dripping. Like that looks sicker than anything. Mm -hmm. Like. If it's like early morning, it's still 20 degrees out or whatever. Even if you got your buddy right there, just lift your fish out of the net, get your hero shot, boom, straight back down. Just don't have dry fish pictures. Like, they look lame anyway. Yeah. For right? sure. What do you use for floating? Floating? Gink? Yeah, you use wet stuff, eh? I use classic gink, yeah. Then if it's rapidy, I'll go up the line about a foot. Oh, yeah, definitely. You keep the line floatings so you just don't have it on that fly. Yeah, on the on the fly line as well as the tippet for sure. Yeah. Um, but something I recently, like, looked into because once you catch a fish or you catch a couple fish on a dry, um, say you're – it's the only – say it's the only caddis you have left or you only brought one caddis that day, and that's the only one you got. And you're like, well, Hank Patterson said you use caddis. <laughs> so, you throw your, so you throw your caddis on, and you've caught two fish on it. you caught two cutties, and you're like, wow, it certainly doesn't float anymore. And your floating doesn't work anymore because your fly is super wet, and you blow on it, and you blow it. Desiccant. That stuff? No. So – yeah, it's called top. This stuff's called top rider. Um, it's by Loon, but it's dry floating and it's desiccant. And desiccant like dries your fly like right out. So huh. if you only have that one fly and it's soaked and it's not floating at all anymore, throw it in here, go like this, leave it in there for a minute, pop it out, you're gonna be good to go again. Sweet. Is that yeah, that's actually a super handy one to have. I mean, if you have to use that, obviously your fly is on its way out. If you got another fly of the same fly, probably just change out and let that one dry, other one dry out and do its thing. But uh, it's definitely a savior if it's the only one you got. Is that like a – that's just a powder, eh? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty um, cool. Kind of looks like – well, kind of looks like illicit substances. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The rope, Joe. Yeah, no, but that stuff has been super handy to me for sure. Huh. It's a good tip. Yeah. I didn't know about it. Um, Aaron was asking what kind of net you think is most ethical to use. Yeah, so, like, this is, like, the, this is, like, an argument that, okay, there's a couple arguments in fishing that I don't agree with, and what kind of net you use is uh, one of them that is if you're using a net to keep your fish off the rocks, I don't care what it is. Yeah. Just use one. Uh, keep your fish in the net. 
Now, to the point of your question, um, what kind of net is um, going to be best for you as well as be good for the fish? Um, I like rubber nets. Um, rubber nets with the most support, so that means small holes. Um, you don't necessarily have to have small holes. I've seen a guy get um, kind of ripped on because the holes in his net were maybe that big. Um, I have nets like that. Like They're going to be absolutely fine. Um, my nets are in my truck, so I can't actually grab them. Um, but I like something with a big basket. Um, something with a big basket, whether you're hiking a creek or or in a boat or what have you, is always going to make, first of all, netting the fish easier for yourself or your partner. Um, second of all, usually your basket's never going to be wider than your backpack, which is where it's hanging, so it's probably not going to snag much. Um, and third and probably most importantly, it gives that, like, if you've got a small net and your fit, the fish is in there, it's got nowhere to go. It's just breathing the water that's in there and it's doing nothing, and that's it. Can't move around. With big nets, your fish is just swimming around. It's hyped up. It's ready to go. Sure, it's probably a little harder to hold for pitchers, but that's just because your fish is super healthy. So I always say go with the biggest basket that's um, feasible for the situation that you're in. Um, smaller holes are technically going to give you a little more drag. So if you're fishing super fast water, it's going to drag in the water when you go to try to net your fish, which is going to make it a little bit tougher. Um, so, I mean – Pretty much any of the rubber nets they make nowadays are going to be good. Mesh nets are absolutely fine. The only problem that they're really going to cause you is have fun with your hook once it's in there, unless you got a barbless hook. If you got a barbed hook, it's a good luck. Game over once they start spinning. And if that doesn't answer like what you're asking, Aaron, feel free to like ask more or, or message me or what have you. I can always shoot you a picture of my nets too, right? So. Yeah, I think those, like the wider the between the holes that plastic is too, the less it's going to bundle up when that fish starts rolling. Right. And, when and so another thing to remember is like the depth of your net too, like which is something I forgot to mention. If your net isn't very deep and it's rubber, when you got a little fish in there, you're fine. When you yeah. have a fish that you want to be fishing for, say you say you're fishing for a 30 inch bull trout and you got a nice big basket, but it's really only a 10 inch deep net. Well, that's just a trampoline for the fish. Um, so when it's in there, it can use its weight. It'll just push down with its tail, launch up, and it's gonna boom, gone. See you later. Have a good day. Um, fish your dreams is out of the net before you got a photo, which whatever you still caught it, so it's cool. Um, but I like having a deep net because they can swim around. Obviously you don't want it to be like just a drowning pool so that you have to go elbow deep to get to it. But I like having something deeper. For sure. Um, do you have any other tips or does anybody have any more questions for Adam? I have a Myself. tip for how to hold your net when you're taking a picture. Oh. If you can believe it or not, you know, what's a pain in the butt. Trying to get your fish out of the net when you're taking a picture and hold on to your net so it doesn't float down the river. I don't know if you guys have this problem. I have this problem because I'm always like knee deep in the water. Um, I tuck my net handle. So I don't use those nets with little tiny handles that are like this long. My handles, I, I mean, I cut it down, but it's, it's a fair length. And I tuck it in behind my knee. And then that way, when you crouch down, it holds pressure on the net, so it keeps the basket just out of the water and level. And then you don't have to worry about your fish tipping out of there. It stays right at your knee, so you can pick your fish up, boom, back in the net. So if your fish happens to flop on you, it just falls in the net, and you're good to go. Yeah. yeah. That was a big one for me. I was like, literally, when I figured out how to do that from looking at someone's picture one time, I was like, huh, genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i used to have always the like the rubber cord so it, it would stay like right in your lap when you're getting it oh yeah but then when you're walking through the trees you're just getting destroyed when the spruce tree grabs it and it comes flying back at you 100 miles per hour and see that's where i like having that that backpack like the old skate pack backs because they work super good for that 
Yeah, I just went to a carabiner now, so it's always right behind me, and yeah, it doesn't go anywhere. Right on. Those hundred mile per hour nets are, and and you know what's coming too is the problem, and you just keep walking. <laughs> oh yeah, and like like if it's me and I'm walking through the woods, and it, it's happened a couple times, I'm like pissed off, so I'll like let it happen and i'll be like i see this happening i see this happening i see wham yeah i'm an idiot (laughs) you're like i don't want to turn around i'll just keep going oh yeah i just get super sick of it sometimes i'll just like ah whatever send it (laughs) a good whipping oh yeah well no fly fishing has been something i've been getting into this year so i appreciate you letting me ramble on about it because uh I mean, I've done it for a while now, if you, if you know me, but it's something that I've like really, um, I'm, I'm actually like really, you know, I'm inspired to learn how to, how to do it. Well, um, I watch some people online, like the Jen, if you guys ever want to learn how to fly fish, don't listen to me, go watch Jensen's fly fishing. Mm-hmm. We don't need to do shameless plugs here, but I'll do a shameless plug for them because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be half a fly fisherman I am yet. And I'm yeah. not very good still. So he's been around forever. I remember watching him when I was young when he did all the Alberta stuff all the time. I mean he's been fly fishing since he was five years old. He's yeah. like some I don't even know how old he is. But um those people are incredibly knowledgeable. They fish a lot of Alberta waters, so I mean you know, the, okay, and this is something so this is something I would like to talk about. Um, so when you watch these videos, guys, and I've said this before on different podcasts, um, talking about my videos, and it's not because I care, because um, normally when I film, I don't film places that um, I'm worried about people figuring out. I don't care. Um, don't sit there and watch people. Like, when you go and watch their video, don't be like, oh, I, I know where they're fishing, or like, I got to figure out where they're fishing. Pay attention to what is going on because if you don't pay attention to what is going on, you won't learn. I ran into a situation where I was fishing with someone and I was trying to explain it to him. And I was like, like you've watched, you got to just watch the videos and learn instead of watching it and being like this, like, because they are beautiful. Don't get me wrong. You watch the videos because the, the, the filming is incredible. Don't I watch all their videos multiple times. Um, yeah. But you got to watch them to see, okay, this is when Dave or Amelia is mending. This is why they're mending, because they're going to tell you exactly why. Or maybe he won't break down a section fully because he doesn't necessarily realize or or he's going to break it down later or what have you. Like, Pay attention to everything they say and everything they're doing as opposed to where they are or what their fly is like. That everything that they say is going to teach you how to be better, not where they are. Because you can, like I've said it a hundred times, you can go, you can go a lot of these places, um, even places that I fish. I have people that have burned me on, on places I asked them not to, and they do horrible there every time. And it's like if you don't know what to do, you will not have results. And okay. not only that, if you get the results, you don't deserve it. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. One hundred percent. But like fly fishing, um, casting, that was like the biggest thing that I was like, I need to learn how to cast 800 feet. No, you don't. The biggest thing you need to do in fly fishing is know how to read water. If you can cast 30 feet, which is your leader, plus 10 feet of line, plus your rod, 30 feet. Boom, you'll catch fish all the time because if you can't catch them 30 feet away from you, you just don't understand how to read water and you should learn how to read like read, read water because it's the most important thing. Spin fishing even. like, like That's yeah. beyond fly fishing. That's any fishing. If you can't read water, you're going to have a lot harder days than knowing how to fish water. Like, sure, cast in the middle of the river all day long. Like, why? What are you doing? Like, watch a drift boat come by and pull streamers off the shore and smash huge browns. It's the same shore that you were just standing at, but you spooked the fish off. There's just so many things that you have to do, especially in fly fishing, that make or break a day. 
One hundred percent. Like you said, it sounds like another show. Talking water and getting diagrams. Oh, talking water is like ten shows. Yeah. Yeah. Because... But like, just like, like the easiest thing to do is be like, it's fast right there. It's slow right here. Fish where they meet. Think yeah. about it. A fish goes into fast water where all the food is, grabs a bunch of food, comes out in the slow water, hangs out, slows down. If nymphs happen to drag by him in that slow water, what's that fish going to do? He's going to see it a heck of a lot better. He's going to move and he's going to eat it. Simple. Yeah. Fish those breaks. Fish those yeah. seams. That's pretty much the easiest way to explain a river. <laughs> Absolutely. If you look at the bottom and every single rock on the bottom is the exact same in the hole, yeah. chances are there's not a fish in there. You can't hold anything. Yeah. He needs some sort of small – it can be a small rock that's like a foot by a foot. That breaks the water underneath there for him to be able to come in, out, in, out, in, out. That's all trout do all day long, six inches, or they might cycle. Like they might do big cycles, but you'll yeah. see that happening, right? So that's different. Complicated. Well, yeah, I think that's a whole other show. But what I missed the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. How you doing, Colton? Well, we got hats in. We got navy blue. And well, that's navy blue. Well, that's more navy blue. Ooh. I'm wearing oh. navy blue right now. This is a navy blue show, bro. Is that what you want as a navy blue? I'm blue. If I was green, I would die. I'm sorry. Do you want yeah, a I like navy blue or, or black blue or, or whatever. I'm a big no, black no. guy. You let me know. know. That come out wrong. <laughs> I'm big on the color black. I don't know. Now it's just getting weird. Um, what, what, <laughs> what? I was going to say, are these hats for sale? Yes, they Where are. can these people buy them? Just get Where a can hold these of fine <laughs> viewers buy these hats? <laughs> Just get hold of me. Northwest Adventures. I know there's a bunch of people already, so I have a list. I'm going to get Yeah, those are going to go fast. Those are beauty, dude. Good job on those. Thanks. They turned out great. I know Thanks. the next. <laughs> I'm still on your black comment, I think. <laughs> It just but, came uh, out wrong. Yeah, I know, but it got me. <laughs> and uh, next order, we're going to get some flex fits because I know there's a bunch of oh, people like flex fits too. How about and, like hoodies and stuff? Yeah, we should probably do that as well. I'm just still kind of, I might have found a clothing line that's got a little longer hoodies. Okay. But if you're under six feet, the other hoodies are fine. The masses want the gear, bro. Oh man, this week's been crazy for hats. I'm yeah, like, hey, just that's let good. Me, that's good to hear. Let me just get stuff sorted. Yeah, but they'll be out this week. I'll kind of get everything organized and get them away to the people. So thanks for all your support, everybody. It's super appreciated. I'm yeah, thank really... you guys. The stuff's fun. Yeah, it's awesome to have our good buddy Adam on here every couple of weeks and. uh I know we're going to have some awesome footage, awesome stuff coming up moving into the fall here because that's an amazing time to fish. Yeah, and, and if we get together here over Todd's wedding, we'll shoot a killer bed. Yeah, I got a sweet spot, tiny creek that you'll like. It's awesome. Yeah, I got, and I, I got some like, good ideas for like angles and stuff. Sweet. It'll be epic, man. I can't wait when we put all of our angles together in one Boy. product. Bam. It's going to be dope. Where can everybody find you, Adam? Horseshoe Kid, guys. Same as always. I'll be him forever, I think, except I'm like a middle-aged man at this point, but whatever, you know, like getting there anyway. It keeps um, you young. So Horseshoe Kid, YouTube, Instagram. Um, I don't really stay active on the whole Facebook thing. That's a little more family-orientated, but you can catch me on there if you really want to as well. Um, if you ha guys have any, like, because, like, I mean, like I say, I don't really like making videos for like 10 guys, but if you guys have like a video that like you want to see of something that I do, maybe 
like let me know because i will shoot a video for people to show them because i learn visually a lot better than talking um so if you guys want to see how i nim for what have you like just let me know or like spin fishing anything like that let me know i think the uh slip bobber video did all right i had some guys message me and thank me for that one um but yeah like if you guys have ideas for videos tag me and drop them in the comments below here and uh i'll try to get to them if it's something that is uh relevant to me i don't really want to do any of those tackle box challenges or anything like that but uh if you have something specific we can get after it if you want to see me and me and mitch hammer giant browns let's do it you should probably bring your eight weight because i got a lake we can go venture to it's just a few hours from here but i'll probably mm -hmm. only bring fly gear well bring your eight i'm weight. not like and i see these people calling people purists i am not one of those guys ever guys i won't <laughs> be i'm just trying to get better I'm just trying to get yeah. better man it's a fun way to fish. And, like, I encourage you guys to try it. You don't need expensive stuff. Like I say, I've pretty much broken everything other than uh, one TFO that I have left for a nice rod. I got some nice reels. But uh, for rods, just max catch. Go on Amazon. Find yourself a decent reel. If you want, message me about what line to get. I can hook you up with a cheap line to get instead of spending a ton of money if you want. We'll get you guys all set up for under a hundred bucks or well, just pro probably just over a hundred bucks for, for a whole setup for a fly rod and I'll shoot you a video how to use it if you want. So let me know. Sounds awesome. Check them out, get a hold of them so we can get you all hooked up for all your next fishing adventures. You know where to find me, Northwest Adventures. You're here right now watching on YouTube or Facebook. I appreciate everybody. Make sure you guys subscribe if you're watching. If yeah, you don't hit the subscribe button, it's great. Subscribes help. Do it for my dude. Oh, wait. For my dude. That's always tricky. You got to point the other way. See, yeah, I did it first yeah. time. That never happens. Yeah. <laughs> and like I like in my videos, like I'll never ask people to subscribe. I don't know about you. So I'm like, subscribe to this dude right now. See, I did it right that time. Yes. I did it last time right on my title. Like it, I'm like getting better at life. Right now. This this <laughs> podcast makes me a better human being. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. I might see you Tuesday or might be deep in the bush somewhere fishing because I got next week off. We're going somewhere. I don't know yet. Our trip kind of got canceled last minute. So we are, who knows, we're either fly fishing or going north for Lakers and walleye. That's so, almost, I would go fly fishing too. I'd like save to the fly. Lakers till October. Big big spawners. Yeah, yeah, fly fishing would be good because I think we're going bass the end of the month. So, Plus, you can't fit like well, you can. Bulls after August are pretty much like done for, right? So you only really got a month. Yeah, I mean you can fish them after that, obviously, if you want. I wouldn't. That's not cool. Yeah. All right, everybody. Cheers. Have a good night. We'll see you next week. Oh, no. I said we might not. And that's still the thing we're going to do because I have no clue if we're going to have reception or what. So stay if tuned. If you want, I can just ramble to these people for an hour and they'll all log out by the time it's on time. <laughs> Maybe you can bring Todd on. Yeah, bring me and Todd. Retirement. Bring him out of retirement. I miss that, dude. I can't wait to see him for his wedding. Oh, it's going to be an amazing time. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome, especially when I ha harass him and tell him he has to shoot a part for my video. <laughs> a signature series? Well, that's like, yeah, I'm going to make people answer questions. <laughs> How big of an asshole was that? Big. <laughs> All right, everybody. See you maybe next week or the week after. Cheers. For sure. Thanks for watching. Peace. Have a good evening. <laughs>